All right, let's roll. Hey, Brian, uh, how, how is Mason Taylor and Omar Spates doing? And also, um, Caleb Jackson, uh, are you going to keep him deep on the kickoffs? I know the first week he played off, but he played deep this week. Well, what did you see in, in his kickoff returns that you like? Um, Mason has uh, made progress. He was out there today um, on the ground running. Um, so, I mean, I, I think we had him at questionable. Um, I would say he's a game time decision. Um, so where is that? I think he's still questionable. We're going to have to see him move around and see what he looks like in pregame. Um, Omar is not as far ahead. We're going to bring him. We're going to dress him out and see what he looks like. But I'm less optimistic about him. Uh, but we'll see what happens. He's still got 48 hours. Um, and if he can make the same kind of you know, progress that Mason did, um, you know, we got a chance, but I would say he's probably more in the, the doubtful range um, using the scale that I've, that I've put out there. Yeah, I mean, I, we, we like how hard he hits it, right? I mean, to me, you know, you're fighting for the 25. You know, you can fair catch and get to the 25 every time, or you can fight to break a couple of tackles. And, and we like his physicality, his ability to, you know, to break a tackle. You break a couple of tackles on kickoff uh, return, you got a chance to, to, to get that thing out into some pretty good field position. Uh, Coach, now with Omar's status a little bit, I guess, in question, does, does that mean Greg Penn's just going to get a lot more snaps, or does that mean Harold's going to have to play a little bit more inside in this game? No, we'll activate Wes Weeks, Whit Weeks, uh, Greg Penn, um, Christian uh, Braithwaite, those will be the guys that will will work the inside, um, and and then Harold will obviously be the guy that we move around. Up here, hey coach. Um, looking back at Arizona Mississippi State last week, did you see any kind of ways that Arizona attacked that defense that you guys might try to as well? Yeah, I mean, Jed Fish is an outstanding football coach. He's a really good offensive mind. I mean, they had some really good schemes. They, I don't know that Jed would say that they executed at the highest level. They had five turnovers uh, and still had a chance to win the football game. But, yeah, they, they did some pretty good things. Look, they're a very difficult defense to go against because it's unconventional, a lot of the things that they do. But at the end of the day, you still have to – uh, be able to stay balanced against them. If, if you're not balanced against them and you can't pick up their pressures, it's a long day. Um, what we were able to do in the second half is pick up some of their pressures, get the ball out, make a couple of big plays. You know, the big one-on-one um, -on -one fade to neighbors last year was big for us. We were able to hit a big run, a couple of third down situations where, you know, we uh, were able to, you know, get out of um, – some plays and get into, you know, uh, higher percentage throws against their pressure. So you've got to be able to manage your offense. And I think Arizona, you know, turned the ball over. And then when they got into a good run in the second half, it's when they took care of the football. It'll be the same thing for us. We got to take care of the football. Um, we make good decisions on offense, especially at, at um, the quarterback position. We should be able to have some success. Over here. Um, is this a game where guys like Jordan Jefferson and Paris Shan can really uh, be impactful players for you all with uh, their ability in the run game? Oh, they're going to be counted on, there's no doubt, right? They're a team that, that does a really good job running outside zone. Um, and, you know, their, their ability to do that has been, you know, clearly demonstrated over the first couple of weeks. So, yeah, the, the, the interior guys, the four techniques, the three techniques, uh, and then you've got to be able to set the edges. You know, we're going to have to do a really good job of setting the edges with our big ends. And um, uh, again, I, I think that, you know, when you talk about our entire defensive line, the Jacks are going to have to do a really good job. Obi's going to have to do a good job. Uh, we're counting on a little bit of everybody uh, to pitch in, um, you know, to be able to defend the run. Uh, hey, Coach, over here. Uh, just, just how big of a weekend do you think this is for your running attack and just kind of learning maybe where you guys are, uh, building on last week's performance and, and just kind of your, your overall assessment of how big of a weekend this is for those guys? Yeah, you know, I, I, I look, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to 
um, the performance of you know our running game and our running backs each and every week. But it's so hard because the defense will dictate a lot of what happens. You know, if if they really want to get um, uh, stubborn about it, um, you know, they can force you to throw the football virtually every down. Um, and and coach, you know, uh, is is not that way. I mean, he's he's he understands the balance that he needs on defense too. But there there's going to be some times where they're going to stunt and they're going to. Uh, have some line movements and make it difficult to run. We've got to be patient with our running game. If we're patient with our running game, um, I think that's really what I'm looking for more than anything else. We can't just abandon the running game. We've got to be patient. Hey, Coach, up here. Um, speaking of the running game, I'm curious of, like, how you're going to use the running backs, like, not just this, thing, not just this game but going forward because, like, Logan Diggs had a really good game. Um, on Saturday, so I'm curious, like, who's going to be that number one back? Will it be Diggs? Will it be Williams? Like, who will be like putting those like most important situations? Well, it could be know? Diggs, it could be Williams, it could be uh, Emery, uh, it could be Jackson, it could be Kane. I mean, we've got a lot of backs, um, and I think I said this the last time I was asked this question. Uh, we're going to go with the guy that is is feeling it. And, and um, seeing it and, and ripping off some, some big plays, we'll keep feeding that guy. Um, but we've got really good backs, and we, we can't get all of them on the field. Um, so it's a competitive situation. Um, our guys know that. Uh, but I think we can feature multiple backs, and we will uh, this Saturday. Brian, anybody uh, else on the injury report this week? Uh, nobody at this time. And when it comes to sack numbers, y'all have one through two games. Is that something that's concerning for you, or is that a number where when you kind of evaluate pass rush in general, you're looking at other sorts of factors like maybe havoc rate or something like that? Yeah, I mean, pass rush um, is really about, you know, are we getting drop back pass? Are we getting quick game? Quick game is, you, you know, you want um, – you want the ball to come out quickly. Uh, you want um, knockdowns because um, generally you can't get to the quarterback. And last week we faced a, an offensive structure where the ball was coming out so quick you, you weren't going to get to uh, Crowley. So um, this week, you know, a little bit more play action pass. Uh, they do move the pocket a little bit. Um, but again, you know, I think you evaluate it and it's totality relative to what kind of passing game you're seeing. Hey, Coach, up here. Uh, about the vertical passing game, saw flashes of it in the last game against Grand Blake State. How confident are you guys that you can continue to, you know, hit on those big plays against maybe some better athletes and better defenses? Well, I think we did against Florida State. I mean, we just, you know, we weren't consistent enough for four quarters. Um, you know, we've, we've got good players. We can push the ball down the field if you're going to run, you know, uh, you know, double cloud and drop eight. You know, it's a little bit harder to get the ball down the field. But, you know, we'll manage uh, what we see. And when we get the opportunity, if we get man coverage, we should win some matchups. Every, every college football team has to. So, um, you know, I, I, guess, I guess my answer would be we feel very confident going into any game that our passing game – um, can stretch the field and generate big plays down the field. Hey, Coach, for Mason Taylor, maybe not quite at 100%. Who else in that tight end room do you think could, could possibly step up in a game like this? Well, we're going to play all freshmen at that position right now. So, um, you know, uh, Mark Way is going to play there. Um, we're going to play um, – uh, KP is going to play there a little bit. Um, who am I missing? Galbraith, who else? Is somebody else? McGowan. Yeah, so we're going to play them all. Um, so they're all going to get an opportunity in some fashion. Now, th they all can't do the same things, you know, because we're trying to feature them in, in, in different looks. But they'll, they'll all get a chance to play, and hopefully, um, you know, Mason is able to, to give us something too. Coach, right here in the front, talked a lot about the run game, Mississippi State. What about the play action passing game off of that? What challenges to those? Yeah, so when you run the ball very well, obviously that's, 
that's the essence of it, right? The ability to now take shots down the field, and that's what they do, uh, whether it's uh, moving the pocket or play action shots. Um, that's what this offense is about, and they do a really good job.